Hi everyone. Um, I am doing a separate video log today to talk about pregnancy loss. Um, I suffered pregnancy loss last year. Um, Teresa and I were writing our book, um, Zen Mamas, Finding Your Path Through Pregnancy, Birth, and Beyond. And, you know, it took us a, a long time to write the book and we spent um, many, many hours and days and months sort of structuring and figuring out what the flow of the book would be. But something that we always knew would be really important um, for all of you, for us, um, for connection, for healing, for our community, would be talking about pregnancy loss. And so it was really important for us to have a chapter all on its own discussing this topic. And, um, you know, we didn't want this to be a chapter that is um, really sad or makes you feel bad or... We just wanted it to be very honest about um, our experience and then other folks' experiences and then also just what it is that um, you can do to, to be supported because it's something that's so common. And so common <laughs> that while um, we were writing the book, we we're actually in the editing process. And so kind of how the editing process went for us is that, um, you know, we write a chapter and then send a chapter, you know, switch and send something to each other, Teresa and I. And then we, you know, we would like send it back and then we would send it to our editor and then our editor would go through and, and she would edit and then we would, you know, go back again and look at it and then We'd send it on to her and then there was another editing process. So basically we're in this like multi-level <laughs> editing process and I fall pregnant. And so um, we're very excited. You know, I've told Teresa right away. And and so we were starting to think like, oh, okay. You know, we talk about how many kids we have, you know, at the beginning of the book, like, do we change that now? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable doing that. So let's just wait and um, you know, about, about eight weeks into my pregnancy, um, I find out that the baby didn't make it. And, um, my son and my husband and my, uh, doula, who's also my nanny, she's, they were all with me. And, um, my daughter was at school. Yeah, I think my daughter was at school <laughs> and uh, Wyatt really wanted to be there. And so, um, so we're, we're having an ultrasound and, uh, and as soon as the ultrasound tech put the thing to my stomach, she immediately pulled it away and she was like, oh, I can't see it. I'm going to have to like have you empty your bladder and then, um, and then I'm going to, you know, go inside and do the ultrasound from inside. And I was like, that's weird because I had actually come in about six and a half weeks instead of the eight week mark. Um, I had come in a little early because I was just feeling nervous and excited and my friend was going in. So I was like, oh, can I slip in and like just check on everything? And I had seen a heartbeat um, at six and a half weeks. So I was really excited for the eight week mark to bring my son and my husband and everybody. And so um, when she said, I can't see it, I was like, that's really strange. So I went to the bathroom and I remember like coming back and sitting down on the bed and she wasn't back in there yet. And I looked at my husband and I was like, this is not, this is not good news. And, and he was like, no, it's not that it's not good news. He's like, whatever it is, we're going to, it's going to be okay. Like, and I was like, okay. And so I was kind of looking at my son, like, wow, I'm going <laughs> to, we're going to have a big conversation, you know, during this time, if this was, is what this means. And so the ultrasound tech comes back inside the room and she has my doctor with her. And I was like, oh my God, no, this is not a good sign. So my doctor said, um, how have you been feeling? And I said, good, really nauseous, you know, normal. And he goes, um, do you still have symptoms? And I said, yeah. And then 
she like puts the thing inside of me and starts um, looking around and, and he goes, okay. He's like, um, the baby didn't make it. The baby didn't make it about two or three days ago, roughly. And he was like, the first thing I want you to know, of course, and like ears are ringing and my eyes are filling with tears. And he's like, the first thing I want you to know is that it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, this is just something that happened to me. It's very common. And he's like, and I, I know that right now you're probably not going to hear anything that I'm saying. And I was like, I hear you. I'm, I'm hearing you. But I was kind of hearing him, but but I really wanted to hear him, you know, and I, I love my doctor. And so I was, um, I was like, I, I hear you. And I just, my head wasn't thinking, wasn't blaming myself. My head wasn't going to like, you know, what happened? You know, my head was just sad. I was just sad. And I was like, wow. I had already all, all the things that you don't realize that you do were in your in your in your head you automatically think, you know, I'm gonna have a baby in this date and they're gonna be this sign and um I wonder what the gender is gonna be and you're sort of like planning a little bit already, right? So it's like a big disappointment. Um, and then also it's just like really something that's not in your control. So it just felt sad and I felt a little bit of like lonely and emptiness. Um, and it also just felt, I felt like, wow, I don't know. He was asking me at that point, my doctor was asking me, you know, do you want to go ahead and do a DNC today? Do you want to wait? And I was like, oh, I, think I, I just want to wait. I need to like think about it and see what happens this weekend. You know, I just wanted to wait. It was Friday. And so um, he was like, of course, you know, just call me. And so I, uh, I went home and um, I laid down and I cried. And I cried the next day. I could like cry thinking about it right now. Um... And I remember just thinking, okay, logical first, right? Um, and my husband too, he was very logical at first. He was like, you know, this is what happens. Your body, you know, took care of something. Maybe something, you know, maybe it was genetically something or chromosomally something, or maybe there was just things didn't match up. This The soul wasn't ready, you know, all these things were sort of like, it wasn't the right time. Um, this, and so, uh, and I, all that makes sense, right? You're like, okay, all that makes sense. Yes. I mean, I want, I would love for my baby to be healthy and I, I don't, you know, I, I want everything to be, to go right with the baby. So, um, and I want the baby to have the best chance. So I, I definitely felt, like logically all of that made sense. <sighs> but then I just felt sad. And I finally was like, okay, I think I just had to go call my friend, Teresa, <laughs> who I knew had been through pregnancy loss before. And so I called Teresa, I FaceTimed her. And as soon as I saw her face, I just burst into tears. And she just talked to me and, and she, you know, told me that she loved me and that um, she knew that this was hard and that it's grief, you know, you're, you're going through grief. You're like losing um, something that honestly, that was part of it that was um, starting to bother me is that I wasn't actually losing anything yet. So I wasn't actually miscarrying. And there was something about that that was really weighing on me too, as I was like, so the baby's still in there, but the baby's not there anymore. Um, 
so I was just sort of confused about how I felt in general because I just felt like in this weird place of limbo. And so Teresa reminded me like, you know, maybe you should look back at our book and read that chapter on pregnancy loss and see if that is helpful. And, um, and then she told me to write about it and and then we just talked for a while. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to read a little bit. And, you know, when we had written that part of the, that chapter, um, it was all in Teresa's perspective because she had gone through a loss. And my perspective, as I said, was from a friend who was there for someone. Um, and so I poured over the pregnancy loss chapter and I read all all of her stories and you know other people's stories and um and it was so helpful it was so comforting that I just wanted to go back and read it again and I was also really grateful that we had um been so convicted to have this chapter in our book because um it really comforted and helped me during a time that felt confusing and um you know I I study this stuff I've researched it I I know the statistics and I talk to women all the time who've gone through it I've read your stories that you guys have submitted on your Zen Mama and yet when it happened to me I was blindsided and um I think that's the part you just can't ever prepare prepare for and that's kind of I think part of a definition of um, loss in any way is that you're not prepared. Even, you know, with losing my father, I knew he was going to die because he was sick. But even once he was gone, that loss, it's still you need, you're not prepared for actually what your body is going to feel like and go through. And so... Um, being able to like connect with other people and read stories and hear stories from friends. And that was amazing and um, really helpful for me. I felt so connected. I did not feel like I was having all of this in a dark and closed space. I didn't feel, you know, shameful or shunned or anything the way that I know that women have talked about feeling before because of, you know, this sort of stigma around um, pregnancy loss and how people just like don't talk about it. And so I do feel like that's changing because um, I would openly say, people would ask me, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay. I just, I was pregnant. I just found out that I um, lost the baby and it's been really hard. And then people that I knew, friends that I knew would be like, oh my gosh, that happened to me. I had a loss in between number one and number two, or I had two losses before I had my first. And I'd be like, oh man, that's really tough. Like, tell me about it. And someone would tell me their story. And it was, you know, like this way of connecting with people who've gone through something that you've gone through and, and every experience is so different. And, um, it was, beautiful. I really honored and am so grateful for that part of it and that connection and how um, that really helped me through. So the next part of this um, is I want to talk about what I did next, um, how I um, decided to spend the next few weeks on self-care and I wanted to heal myself emotionally and physically. Um, so that'll be my next video.